you know, Joe, this, this might be a hot take, but I'm going to say it. I think colleagues should seriously consider selling their charters. And I, I don't say that lightly because I know that they have uh, grand ambitions over that team. I think they've built something very great. Uh, you know, AJ Allmendinger has been a huge part of that since really since the very beginning when the team first started to come into their own. Um, he got them that win uh, at the Indy Road Course. I've got the die cast right behind me, actually, uh, from when they were just an open team and, uh, you know, really looked like they were taking some steps forward. AJ went full time last year, got a win at the Roval. Um, but ultimately, they didn't run as strong as I think they would have liked. Now he's back in Xfinity, but their Xfinity program as well. Um, I think it, it, it's not terrible by any means, but it certainly doesn't look like uh, the weekly threat to win that they were the last couple of years. And then on the Cup side, like we mentioned, I mean, Joe, we, we posed the question, Jackson talking uh, to us yesterday on After Dark, you know, could Josh Williams uh, get into the top 20? And I said, you know, they're, they're going to be lucky to break into the top 30 with how uh, they've been running lately. And uh they, they did at least clear that bar today. So, uh, you know, credit where credit's due there. Um, it's it's something at least. But, you know, for a team whose motto is trophy hunting, 27th and 28th is uh, not where you want, you really want to be running. Um, so I think that some major changes need to be made over a colleague. Um, if they don't turn it around soon, I would say, honestly, with what charters are going for nowadays, you know, you keep hearing – Junior Motorsports, I don't know if that would be a potential buyer because um, because Junior went on his podcast when they bought their charters for $10 million and said, you know, we're, we're not going to be racing in the Cup Series if they're going for that much. And uh, LiveFast just sold, sold their Despires, I think, for like $40 million this offseason. So the market, it, it feels like it keeps rising higher and higher every time. I, I feel like it's inevitable at some point that it's just going to crash. But with what they're going for right now, this might be the perfect time to sell. And then, hey, use that money. Like you just did at Coda, putting AJ Allman in number 13, field an open car again. You've had some success before. You've won a race uh, as an open car. Your partner, Trackhouse, won a race with an open car with SVG at Project 91. Use use the money you make from that, reinvest it into your Xfinity program, get that program back to being a championship contender, and then go have fun in the road courses, trophy hunting with SVG and AJ Allmendinger. That's that's what I think they should seriously consider uh, the merits of at this point. I, I know that you know, it's it's great to see how far that program has come. The fact that they're even in the Cup Series now with two charters uh, is a testament to the hard work that Matt Colley and Chris Rice have put in. I don't want to discredit that entirely. But if this is going to be the weekly story for Colleague Racing, and more importantly, if their Xfinity teams can't pick up the slack a little bit and turn back into weekly top 10 and top 5 contenders, I mean, Josh Williams in particular, uh, you know, I, I don't think it's been the start of the year that he was hoping for coming over to this team either. Um I think it's a solution that they have to look at. I think I have to agree with you because at the end of the day, I feel the Cup Series team is just taking away some of the resources from the organization and they just don't seem to have anything going in the right direction for them. The way I see it, some of the mistakes from last year, especially A.J. Amendinger, missing out on qualifying for Richmond, and then what they said, well, Richmond is one of those tracks he's not exactly the best at, so we're going to miss Richmond. And was, at the time, he was near the top 16 in points potential playoffs. Now, I, I would be shocked. The only way that could happen is if they win Talladega or Daytona, one of those tracks. Overall, I feel Colic Racing, and like you said, we know they've built up something big with their motto, we're going trophy hunting. I do think they need to figure out, okay, we need to make some drastic changes if we want to continue trophy hunting because right now, that trophy's nowhere in sight. If they were to sell the team and just, okay, we're an open team, look at the landscape currently. I mean, right now, most races have 37 cars, still short of the 40 field maximum. I'm not concerned that they're not going to qualify for a race besides the Daytona 500, which that'll be next year. But if they were to sell the charter, you know, assuming that'll be something that'll take effect the following year, really reinvest in the Xfinity series. And really, if they're a powerhouse in the Xfinity series, just keep focusing on that and then maybe do the open races here and there, especially the road course races with AJ Allmendinger, maybe have some partnerships with Trackhouse for a potential, you know, Project 91 in the future or more Shane Van Gisbergen. 
a lot of options out there, but I just feel they cannot continue just this approach because they're not going anywhere. It just seems like they're going further and further behind. Yeah, and Joe, to that point, I can already see people in the comments saying, well, Ben, the charter system exists. You can't make any money running open. It's you know just a money pit that they're not going to get out of, and it's not worth it at all. I mean, to that, I, I would say I, I certainly get where you're coming from, but clearly somebody, colleague, thinks it's worth it because they just did it at Coda. And they did it in the past before they even had charters and were exploring a cup series program. So, I, I mean, I, again, I, I wish there were more purse money available to be open teams. I think the uh, the discrepancy in how much they get as opposed to charter teams is, you know, not nearly enough. And uh, we could talk about that on a whole roundtable show in and of itself. But um, I, I just, again, I think that the opportunity is there. You can go have fun a couple times a year trophy hunting with two excellent road course racers that you have as part of your program. And take that money, put it back into Xfinity, go all in there. I think, again, it's an option worth considering. I will say this, Joe, to your point about the playoffs. I think, you know, we've been reminded the last couple of years with how, you know, with injuries and everything, the owner's championships have been slightly different from the drivers. Normally, that's not the case in Cup. But I will say this, you know, with Colleague using a rotation of drivers in that 16 again, if SVG can win a road course race in one of his starts or Almending or whoever the case may be, um, you know, super speedway, like you mentioned as well, maybe they get into the owner's playoffs. I don't think they're going to win them, but it could change the outcome of that championship a little bit and make it worth following again as well. So there is still a little bit of a wild card aspect there, but you know, again, that's, that's another change that I I wasn't really sure where they were coming from with that. You know, I think it's much easier to help build a program up when you have like what we saw with AJ Allmendinger last year, one driver in that car all year to help build that team's chemistry. It's much harder to build that chemistry when you're going from driver to driver week to week we don't even know, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think we even have the full schedule lined up exactly yet in, in terms of who is going to be in that car every week because Ty Dillon's deal was just announced a couple of weeks ago as to what races he was going to run. So I feel like there are still some races where uh, we're not quite sure who's going to be in that car until the entry list comes out or you know, there might still be some deals being finalized. I don't know. It's just it's It's a business model that has worked for them so far, but I think it might be time to reevaluate some things over there. And especially in the Cup Series, I know Josh Williams has a fan following after what happened in Atlanta. The short tracks, that might make sense. But then Ty Dillon, I just don't know about, you know, he's been around for a while, just not have the results there. I almost feel it will be worth it sticking with somebody that it's an upcoming rookie, you know, invest in him for two, maybe three years, depending on how things go. But this musical chairs of who's driving, it's just not helping out and just not going anywhere. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 Ty Dillon's a great guy. Um, you know, I don't want this to be taken the wrong way. Um, but I think he, his his Cup Series stock, at the very least, certainly peaked a long time ago. I don't understand really the the thinking behind. I mean, I guess if you want veteran leadership, I think you've got plenty of that in AJ Allmendinger. But um, you know, maybe Ty provides a little bit of that. I don't know um, if it's enough to compare uh, to AJ, but. Um, I would much rather, to your point, Joe, see, you know, Derek Krause take up some of those starts in that car and use that to gain experience for him and his career rather than, I, again, I think it's it's very unlikely you're going to be trophy hunting with Ty Dillon in the Cup Series with that program in 2024. So, again, I think it's it, – there's certainly uh, – you, you can't take anything away from colleague and what they've accomplished so far, but if they want to keep building on that legacy, I think it, it might be time for some hard conversations over there.